What is up everybody? Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're going to talk about some of the key moments and key things that we can strive for along the process of training a coon hound. Now uh, these are not going to be in any particular order. I haven't wrote any notes. These are just going to be off the top of my head. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Um, I had this video idea come to me because of comments like this right here. Um, and also I had recently been on Facebook and I seen a dog that was uh, looked like it was phenomenal, like really coming along great in the training. Um, and somebody was wanting to get rid of it because they didn't have woods to get it into. Um, sometimes those dogs are fine. If they're, if they're looking so great, um, it's worth just laying them up for a little bit until you can get situated. Um, now, once we get through the training and the dog is actually hunting, that's when we that's when we really want to mind and watch how much time we have them laid up. Um, but as they're still going through the training process, we have all the time in the world, essentially. Um, so, one of the first key things that we're always going to watch for and look for, and one of the things that I always look for is, number one, when you have like a little baby puppy, um, these guys, we're one of kind of look for their uh, tenaciousness and their ferocity, right? We want to see how um, how aggressive they are. And some dogs need that nurtured, okay? So don't mistake, don't make a mistake um, and try to make your hunting dog docile, right? We want a dog that is got spark. We want a dog that has aggression. We want a dog that has drive. We want to nurture those characteristics and those traits in that dog. And it starts off at that little puppy. And that's why I recommend doing the imprinting with a stuffed animal toy on a string. That way we can get aggressive with them and, and focus all that ferocity and all that aggression and hone in those skills for that dog on something um, constructive, right? Um, and like that comment that I put up, this kind of goes hand in hand with that. Uh, you you can leave a dog alone, right? And and the dog is going to bark at what it wants to bark at. It's going to chase what it wants to chase. It's going to do what it wants to do. Um, that's why I've said multiple times on the channel, you know, training a coon hound is more like focusing them, okay? So we are taking everything that they have built into them and pointing it in a direction. And the, the quicker and the faster that we can get them pointed in that direction, the better off everybody will be, right? Um, if we take all that energy and all that angst and all that drive and, you know, all that hyperactivity and we point it in a direction to get a job done, then the dog isn't losing out, right? The dog's not losing out. We're not losing out. Okay, so like the, like the first thing is we want to nurture that. We want to nurture the drive and the the aggression in the dog. No, we don't want to let the dog bite us or, you know, things like that. And this is where we draw lines constructively and say, you're allowed to do all this stuff, but you have to only do it here. You're only allowed to do it right here when this sense involved, when this thing's involved, this is where all this goes. You don't bring that out here that we're just focusing the dog's time and energy to a, a specific place. And, um, imprinting. Okay. So, that goes hand in hand with the first one. Imprinting a dog, I think, is exclusively important. I mean, I've done it with all the dogs that I've ever gotten at a young age, is imprint them with the scent that you're going to be hunting with. And that's any hunting dog, not just the coon dog. It's any hunting dog. Imprinting a scent onto a dog, which is, you know, making them very familiar with a scent at a very young age. It, it just makes a good bond and a good friendship with that dog's nose when it does go into the woods, right? It, it's familiar, it knows, it, you know, it's like putting two and two together for the dog. Um, so imprinting is definitely a big thing. Another key moment that we're gonna jump to here um, is the barking, okay? The first thing that everybody wants to do, okay? So when we get a little baby pup, it gets in the cage and it wants to whine and go off and go off and go off and go off. Yes, this is aggravating, this is horrid. Uh, horrible it can drive you bonkers but for the most part uh you gotta let them do it you have to let them do it um and in in a super excess probably not but you have to allow them 
to be vocal um, because if we spend the first six or eight months on a dog and the only thing that we have been training is don't bite, don't chase, don't uh, bark, don't chew on that, don't, you know, all this stuff is counterproductive to actually uh, hunting. Um, we need all that intact with the dog and we need a lot of that nurtured with the dog too. And each dog is going to have a different percentage level of each of these things that need to be nurtured more or less than the other thing, right? Okay, so the barking, what barking does is it turns into baying, okay? So baying is another very big key moment, especially with coon hounds. Well, some dogs will do it right? They will just naturally like to bay everything. They will just bay up no matter what. And it, there's no fuss, no issue about it. And some dogs aren't so natural about it. And some dogs, you have to work that out of them. Yeah, they'll get them out in their pen by themselves, or they'll be out in the window by themselves, and they'll see something and they'll bay, go ahead and bay up. But we're not getting them to actually do uh, do that for us when we want them to, right? So we, we need it to come on and turn on when we want it to and shut off when we want it to and be focused and directed at what we want it to be uh, at. So when we catch a dog starting to bay up and usually, you know, the first couple months, you know, you know, whatever, six weeks all the way up to probably, you know, four or five months old, they'll start, you'll see them bay something, whether they're baying another dog, they're baying something out the window, they're baying something in the yard, they're baying people riding by on their bikes, Whatever the case may be, the dog starts baying up. And when we start to see that, when we start to see the dog actually start baying up stuff, this is when we want to go ahead and try to get the dog to bay a coon, to bay up on a drag, to bay up on a thing, whatever the case may be. But that is another really key moment is when the dog starts baying things, okay? Um, baying and barking are different, right? Um, they're easily confused unless you and, and if you don't really understand the actual terminology of bang it can be confusing but the dog is just using its bark um to you know get at something and a lot of times what will happen is if we have a little puppy and we've kept it out of you know scraps with the other dogs and we've kept it you know hush mode, can't bark, can't talk, and we've kept it out of the yard and not free range, and we don't give the dog any type of, you know, uh, control over itself to where it feels independent enough to go ahead and base something, then they probably won't. You know, it, it's it's not going to come at, uh, you know, a relevant early or convenient time. It's going to come at the cost of us having to put time and effort into getting the dog to do it. Um, so letting things take their natural course with the dog is sometimes the better option than even training on them at all. So it, it's sometimes just watching the dog for a couple weeks and seeing where it's going with its own development to get a refresh and a retrack onto the dog um, and then go from there. So the, the bang would be number two, uh, a really big key moment here. Another big key moment, and this will come at any age uh, really, um, and there's different levels to this, and we want the highest elite level of this that we can get out of that dog. So this is one that you really want to nurture, is the drive, okay? So the dog sees a toy, and it's and it's going to attack it, right? If it sees something that it wants out there, it's going to shoot off and try to get it, okay? So this is what we're going to watch for. How fast, how determined, how, you know how involved, how excited they are to actually, how much energy they are putting behind this, how hard are they actually taking off and how hard are they actually searching and trying to actually get that, right? Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, leaves, stick, bird, it doesn't matter what it is, but when we start seeing the dog put this together, I have the ability to give chase. I have the ability to give chase to something this is another key moment. This is another key development moment, uh, development moment that we we have, and this is one that we want to encourage. This is the one that we want the most. We want to build this dog's drive to a level that it is almost savage, savagely trying to get whatever it's getting right, and we're going to direct that in and in, into the constructive thing of a, a, a coon scent or or a coon. 
But if we can develop it and let them develop it on their own, it's so much easier to coax out of them. It's so much easier to focus them in on something. And once we give them something that they can focus their, their mind on, they will settle down other places. They will for, you know, they won't kind of do this thing to other things. Once they have an object, once they have an item, the coon or the coon scent or the drag or whatever have you, once they have that locked into their brain, that's what they're going. That's what they want. That's their trigger. They smell this, bam. It's turn on the jets time. It's, you know, start banging time. It's start tracking time. It's all of these things. Okay, so that would be another huge key moment is the dog actually looking and seeing something and giving chase. And this is when we want to start really focusing the dog onto the coon scented items or the coons. Um, some dogs will take right to a coon, other dogs will not. Uh, it just is at the time of the coon, okay? So another thing that we, we need to pay attention to is, and this comes with age, and, and it really does just come with age. I've come across maybe a few puppies that don't need, that never needed any of this, but the woods time stuff, and that is the dog needs to build, uh, it needs to be communicated to the dog that it's okay to go away, right? It's okay for the dog to leave your presence completely and totally. Um, uh, puppies, they will want to linger around you. They will stay closer with you. They won't want to take off as much. And this might not develop until we get up into the six, eight, uh, even a year old age. But we can nurse that along by allowing the dog to do this without any repercussions. And this is another thing that kind of boxes you off. Okay, so if we have a regular dog that we don't want to disappear into the woods and go find us something we always have our eyes on the dog and we're always keeping it within a distance and we're always calling it back get out of the yard get over here get over here get from over there get back with me come back here uh, so this is one thing that we want to kind of not do with a coon dog until we actually want to pack up and get out of there um, this is something that is more you're going to put more into use into the woods and into the woods time and that's why we have woods time but um the development of distance away from you and and communicating to the dog um, in the simplest way that you can which is no communication um the dog will slowly figure out that it's okay he's going to be there when i come back it's okay he'll find me it's okay He's not going to get me in trouble if I peel out of here. It's okay to do this. It's okay to do what I'm doing because one thing, they have to have the confidence to be off by themselves and that takes quite a while. So that's another key moment that you, you have to accomplish in Kunal training is the dog getting gone. Okay, so if we're keeping a dog on a leash the entire time and then we're cutting five feet from where we want to hunt, the dog never has the chance to develop the skills to get out and go, right? It never develops the skill set of I'm okay in the woods by myself, okay? Another key moment here that um, is the hugest moment when we're training coon hounds because we can put together all of those things and we can have the highest, most elite performance out of all of those things. But the one thing that is the most key moment that you could possibly have on your coon hound is when it starts looking up okay so when it starts looking up to find things when it realizes it's up there that is the key moment that we really are after the entire time right we really need this to be translated and some dogs take a extremely painstaking amount of time to get that clicked in their head that there is a up and down, right? It's not all right out here. It, there's a up there and there's a down here. And one thing that we can do to encourage this, and this is what I talk about in the training dog solo, is put their toys up on stuff, put their feet up in the air, up on top of things, and get them to force forcibly, oh, there is this other dimension that I have to pay attention to. And like I said, some dogs are immediate. You don't have to teach them nothing. They're already all about it. They already know. They have all that figured out. You don't need to go through this step. And those are the dogs that you're going to have super fast results and super fast success with. But at some point in time, and every dog's training, it's going to have to put it together that this goes up there in that tree. And 
this is a huge disconnect that happens. That's why we get the dogs go to the tree and not bark. This could go, uh, the dogs go to the tree, fumble around, and then just be like, ah, it can't. There's no existence of the up and down in their brain. And that is one thing that we have to get hammered in their head is that it's there is a up and down. So that is a huge key moment. Um, some other key moments that we need to be on the lookout for is number one, dog aggression. Number two, people aggression. Um, we want to curb these immediately, okay? Um, there is some things uh, I will tell you that out of all the breeds of dogs that I've ever owned, um, coon hounds are the absolute most difficult to get to quit being people mean. Um, it's almost like once you turn them people mean, it's utterly impossible to get them to go the other way. Um, because for one, coon hounds have, uh, uh, teach them once and they get it kind of thing, right? So the, it, they learn it and then that's how it is. Um, and they're, they're very temperamental in that way to where uh, bad things, um, stuff that happens to them that are bad really solidifies and in, into their actions and it buries herself really deep in them uh, and it turns into stubbornness and this is something that's a super stubborn dog or a dog that has been turned people mean by abuse or pain or whatever the case may be it's almost impossible to get them to turn the other cheek and get back into the good graces of things um, there's a lot of things that can lead into that. So we do not ever want to allow people mean us. And we have to very carefully watch the amount of discipline and the amount of pain that we're inflicting during discipline, uh, especially in the coonhound world and especially in the coonhound dogs. Because once they hit that limit, they're done done. Um, and it's almost, it's almost a sad fact. Um, but... That's something that you have to be uh, uh, watchful for, and you have to be very, very mindful of how we handle that situation. The dog meanness things, not a lot of coon dogs are dog mean. Um, I've never come across a coon dog that was naturally dog mean. This is a learnt behavior. This is a behavior that they will develop, or it will just be like a, a, a happenstance. I've only seen coon dogs be... Um, be dog aggressive in two situations number one at the food bowl and number two at the tree okay so those are the two things and when you have a dog that is so psyched and so geeked up about what's in that tree and it, it becomes possessive of that tree and it, that, that's why it's important that we curve all these things as a pup um, as a very young pup we don't want to allow any of those things um, because if they start off that way we can train it out of them but if they get old and then they turn that way, it's kind of impossible. So that's another couple key things that we want to keep an eye out for. Um, some more key things here that we really want to pay attention to. I would say number one, we want to pay attention to when the dog is losing its puppy teeth. Okay, because this is typically the age, you know, prior to puppy teeth, they are going to be wanting to chew. They're going to want to be, you know, they're just kind of being wild little puppies. Once they start losing those puppy teeth and getting in those big teeth, this is when we can kind of put the pressure on them a lot more harder uh, and, and expect to see a lot different levels of what we were seeing as a puppy. So we're going to get the puppy once it loses its puppy teeth and it starts getting in its regular teeth. Everything that this puppy was about at this age, it's going to be amplified. So it's really good to work with them when they're very little before they lose their puppy teeth and then after it we kind of just let them mellow out and get their teeth in and once they get their teeth in um, everything that we laid the groundwork for we can kind of put into action at this age right um, and it, it's not every single dog not every single dog is just going to be like oh he lost his puppy teeth now he's got this teeth now he's going to do this no it's not like that but you can expect to see a shift in the results that you're getting between this age stage um, and that's one thing that you want to pay attention to you want to pay attention to when the dog is actually getting puppy or losing puppy teeth and things like that because it can give you a good inkling what to expect coming or going forward um, another thing here that we really want to pay attention to and want to watch out for that is a uh, very good uh, key moment that is a good indicator 
that the dog is ready to you know function and do work properly is we're going to see a stage at some point in time and it could be at any age that the dog is kind of going to go from la 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 i don't really care to i'm invested right these that's a key flip and if we're going to miss that and we're going to um you know flub up that key flip we're going to cost ourselves uh you know a headache we're going to cost ourselves a headache if we're not there to direct that flip um and if we're not training the right stuff at this moment we're going to get a dog that is going to be turnt funny a little bit right they're going to be misdirected and it's going to be right in the time frame where they are really going i'm turning from kind of lackadaisy to I'm about business. Um, this is the age stage that we really want to watch for and really pay attention for in our dog. I think a lot of dogs, they'll start, you know, they'll start looking a little bit slimmer, muscling up a lot more, getting a little bit of bulk to them. Uh, maybe they ain't so duck facious and they ain't got the big puppy ears, not looking so flunky and, and kind of goofy looking. Um, this age stage where they kind of transition out of, I don't even know what you would age stage you would call this, but their their body will kind of transform over into a more adult kind of thing, and and they'll they have a lot more muscle structure on them, be a lot more solidified. Maybe they're done growing, and you can just know it, right? So this is a good age stage to be there, um, to be there to really start kicking butt on some good training. Now this is turning into a pretty long video. If you guys have stuck it out this long, get down there, hit a like and a subscribe on my content. Check out the channel uh, feel free to get down there and leave me something in the comments or shoot me an email at mailbrookstudios at gmail.com all lowercase and uh thanks for stopping in guys keep them treated